Shalom to your friends and Yeshua the Messiah. Our Lord Jesus Christ says that um, you are my friends if you obey my commandments. Any friends out there of Jesus Christ? How many commandments is there again? Two. Two, you see. According to the New Testament. Yes, I mean, Yeshua summarized the law. That you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind and strength and your neighbor as yourself. This is a summary of the law and the prophets. Which is actually written in Deuteronomy 6. So that statement itself was from the law, because as you remember, Jesus Christ was a law keeper. Uh, the Pharisees pretended to be law keepers, but they weren't law keepers. So what does this mean? Well, look at what Jesus Christ was involved with. How did he love the Lord his God with all his heart, mind and strength? He kept the Father's commandments. And he loved his neighbor as himself. And how did he demonstrate this? By preaching the, the good news of the kingdom. One must repent of their sin and turn to Yahweh. Um, acknowledging Jesus Christ as the, the son of the living God. He is the word of God. That no man comes to the Father except through him. Hallelujah. And so that is the basis of the gospel. So why? I mean, Christians today will preach the basis of the gospel, but they will not teach the commandments. Because this is a major stumbling block that Satan has put um, before the brethren um, in, the, in these last days. Um, because the gospel is so easy to understand that, I mean, as, as, far, as far as I'm able to understand myself, that I pray and I hope there will at least be two witnesses always that will be preaching the gospel in whatever city or whatever nation you're from. If nobody's preaching that basic truth about um, turn, repent from your sin, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ uh, you know, and be baptized and you shall be saved. If nobody's actually preaching that basic gospel in your town or city, get out there. Get out there and start preaching the gospel. But I believe in, um, with a relationship with God that the Holy Spirit is always going to lead you into keeping God's commandments. And through his um, supernatural anointing, yes, we can pray for our neighbours, our friends, our family in Jesus' name, and they can recover, recover from illness and sickness and disease. Um, I heard Dr. Lupo, I've been watching more of his videos recently, um, he he uh, is one who acknowledges the Mandela effect. I don't believe he's a Christian, but he uses quite new age techniques to actually heal people. But what what he's actually saying is, whatever reality you believe in, then it will be real for you. I watched one of his videos, and it's basically about the placebo effect. So I believe that this uh, takes place, especially in a lot of fake Christian ministries that they use this placebo effect. Um, and it's partly true in scripture. You know, it says in the Proverbs, a man is um, outwardly what he believes he is in his heart. You know, so if you if you believe that you're, you're not capable of something, I hear that quite a lot from people. Are you any good at cooking? Are you any good at woodwork? Are you any good at driving? Are you any good at sports? And the first thing that a lot of people will say is, I'm not any good at that, never was any good at that. Well, that's not PMT, that's not positive mental attitude, for a start. Positive mental attitude isn't new age, by the way. That's something that the Bible teaches. Um, that when, you know, friends, family turn against you, you know, um, if you're preaching the gospel, or, for example, if someone gets healed, and you know that it's through the power of the Holy Spirit, through, through a prayer that you've said, and then everybody just says, well, um, well, it's through Jesus, but not through you. And then they just totally disregard you as if, like, you're a piece of rubbish. Well, what you should do is acknowledge Jesus' words and say, this is how they treated the true prophets of God. Right? Woe to you when men speak well of you. 
Woe to you when men speak well of you like your Benny Hens and all these people. I believe that the Holy Spirit is not involved with many of these uh, people that Satan puts in front of, of your face on God TV. Um, God is not involved in their ministry, but they have a placebo effect, a type of a um, hypnotic trance that they, they're able to put people in through their shows. You know, they use music, they use repetitive phrases, and, and they're very uh, positive with regards to, you know, healing someone, which I believe that um, that's, that's something they've learned from the Bible. And, it, and a lot of the, the, the um, sermons that these guys preach are from sermons 100, 200, 300 years ago from men of God. And they've just been adjusted slightly. You know, the English and the, the grammar has been adjusted slightly. Um, to please the audience. And this is how so many people get deceived. That they're using a King James Bible. They're preaching what seems very credible sermons. And then once you've sort of eaten all that up. Then it's time to call in and give your last penny to them. You know, otherwise, you know, you could be going to hell. You know what I mean? So, uh, this is how deception works. Um... They'll use a lot of techniques, they'll use a lot of other people, they're plagiarists, all of these guys, um, including Ellen G. White was a plagiarist, by the way. You've got to be aware of that. I mean, there's a lot of very self-righteous SDAs that are, that are like, you know, this is the this is God's church, you know. It always has been, you know, for the last age, right? Some of them are genuine, genuine believers. Like, they're, I believe that a lot of them are saved. But, eh... Uh, they, they, they just haven't got to the, the deception yet of their, their founder. You know, that she was a plagiarist. She uses, used other people's work to enhance any dreams or visions or anything she did. But what I would say in favour of her is that she didn't have all truth. And that's something that is, is in favour of her because there's a lot of false leaders out there that claim to have all the truth. It's just not possible, my friends. This is why... Um, this is how God uses, obviously, um, uses a person to give a word of knowledge or a rebuke or healing or um, speaking in tongues or a message for the church. is to keep us all humble because none of us have, like, um, the whole truth all the time. Like, when we come to Jesus Christ, I believe, like, you know, that's, like, if you've experienced that, if you've experienced the, the born-again spirit from heaven, and your spirit, spiritual body, which is dead in, um, in your sins and transgressions, that um, I was in prayer with someone a few years ago, and they actually saw their, their old self being cast into the lake of fire um, while they were out praying and fasting. And so you can take that two ways. You can say that the, God is actually warning them that this is what's going to happen to them unless they repent of their sin. Or you can take it to the fact that uh, the person was in a transition um, in receiving the Spirit of God, which I don't think, and if this person's watching the video, this message is for them, by the way, because I didn't plan to say this. I just prayed, I basically pray before I do these videos, and I just say, Lord, whatever you want to say, just say it. But um, what I would say is um, about that is you have to um, ask for the Spirit of God. I, I believe that whatever the person knows who they are. And um, I could be wrong. Like in the past few months, they could have really had a godly experience. But in, in, in my heart, and what God is showing me is that um, they haven't yet been fully, or I believe, born again. They've tasted something of God, the Holy Spirit, God has allowed them to go out there and show his presence and doing some healing miracles and stuff like that. But his his spirit body yet is not, um, I don't believe, is conformed to his new creature in Christ. Um, so I just think that person should should seek um, seek the Lord a lot, lot more um, at the moment. So I, I never plan to give that word. But I've been watching Anne um, Barn videos, 
Um, she's the one that does the um, sexuality in Islam. And she did a video about di diabolical narcissism, which I, I uploaded to my channel. And there was just too much references to Catholicism. Like she was as asking people to pray the rosary and all that kind of stuff. And the woman clearly, um, she's got major issues with the Catholic Church, but at the same time she's still trying to be a Catholic. Um, as she says a lot of very good things, a lot of good points she makes. I think I made one statement on the Islamic se sexuality video and it's got more comments than, it's got hundreds of comments on that one. And there's another one, um, it's called Inventor Jailed for uh, making this video. <laughs> and that's got something like 1600 thumbs up and umpteen amount of comments. Um, into which, you know, your um, Satan and Lucifer and all them have commented on that as well, which is quite funny. <laughs> it's quite funny. <laughs> They've got nothing better to do, you know, than, than comment and, well, you know, anyhow. So, um, yeah, she made a lot of good points, um, did Anne. She's a very, very bold, outspoken woman, but I just couldn't have that on my channel. Um, just too many references to the rosary, Catholicism. You know, if, if, if it's not in the Bible, God doesn't want you to do it. God doesn't want you to pray to the saints or pray to Mary. It, you know, you pray to the Father in Jesus' name. That's real biblical Christianity, my friends. So just just be, be sure. Um, I think it's very important we should um, rebuke. Uh, and God does the chastising. I don't, I don't know how many of us have got the power to chastise, but God has that power um, to chastise people. But I think we're expected to rebuke those who are in error. Um, that's, that's a very important thing. And love, of course. And uh, because without love, we are nothing. And so if we're doing it spitefully and hatefully, um, you know, God won't be able to use us. But if we're doing it with... Um, God's glory um, and for his glory and that's that's the intention of our heart then God honors that you know God honors that very much and so hallelujah so yeah I mean um, walking with Yeshua um, is a very very narrow path indeed you know we're getting so much happening and um, people have different opinions and uh, all that stuff and there's been a lot of fallouts and disagreements the most important thing we should remember is if we disagree with someone we we should do it in love and we should make sure that um, we maintain a right relationship with that person it's very very important because um, the Lord speaks about that love is um, the most important thing that we can show in our lives that will bring people into the kingdom of God. Not the spiritual gifts, not healing people, not um, prophesying or all these things are good. But the most important thing um, that we can have is to have love, have the love of God in our lives and to show love uh, to others. And, and this is a way um, which abates a lot of the attacks of Satan, attacks of the enemy on relationships, on marriages, and that type of thing. And it's very important if you're a woman who you subject yourself to as a husband, because it's going to be for the rest of your life if your husband is like believing in all kind of crazy theories and just following all kind of like heretical um, so-called Christians, Bible teachers that are just basically Catholics. Um, you know, that's for the rest of your life. You know, so make sure if you're a woman Whoever you get married to, make sure that person is uh, in alignment with the Word of God and you should be like-minded in a lot of the things which you um, believe in and, and you adhere to, uh, the doctrines that you have. Most important thing is, is, of course, love. Love. Again, love is mentioned more times in the Gospel of John and the Epistles of John than I think the rest of the Gospels. Um, you can see the amount of times, there's probably a study online you can do. But I know that it's mentioned a lot of times, and it's very, very important 
that we have love for the brethren. Not love for your YouTube channel, love for your doctrine, love for this. No. If you don't have love for the brethren, my friends, you're dead in your sin. Don't you realize that? You know, if, if, you, if you don't love your br brother or sister in the Lord, you're still in darkness and you're actually lying to yourself. It says this in the epistle of John. So I thank, I thank you for all the brothers and sisters on this channel that show me love. Um, and that we can hand in hand, hand rebuke uh, the, 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 the believers who are in error. It's a good thing because it means that they'll thank you later on. If you rebuke a, a fool, they will hate you. But if you rebuke a wise person, they will love you for that. Another thing is that if there's something that God wants you to know, God will always send at least two or three witnesses to confirm a matter that God wants you to um, take heart. And, you know, maybe something in your life God isn't pleased with. It may be somewhere that God wants you to visit. Um that type of thing, God will always send at least two or three people very randomly um, into your life um, so that you're like, wow, that's only God could do that. If it's just one little troll, you know, typing stuff and, you know, with, with all kind of teen YouTube channels changing their name and it's the same guy and they're just trolling away. Look, you, you, you're not in the Holy Spirit, friend. You, you, you're, you're, you're consumed by a, a satanic spirit which is probably along the lines of envy, along the lines of you're just feeling empty, you're feeling lonely, you're jealous. It's along these lines. You're not moving in the Holy Spirit, dear friend. It little troll, whoever you are, you know what I mean? There's a lot of trolls on YouTube. And as, as far as um, a few, obviously, channels speculate that um, there's even government agents on there that will just throw things in to confuse people. So you just got to be aware of the comment section. I can't really get into the Google Plus, so I can, but it's, it just takes me time, and I just can't really be bothered, to be honest. Um, and I know that uh, Jay from Too Many too many Lies, like, I see some of your comments, brother, but if um, I know you commented in one of the videos, and it was a sort of a conversation we were having. You're welcome to call me up anytime, brother. Um, if you've got things on your mind, but but you know the, you just seem to be in a little bit of a grey area with this Mandela effect. You can't see that it's happening, and yet you know it's sort of. I mean, you can disagree with Mandela effect, certainly. Yeah, I mean, there's 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 no problem with that, but there, there just seems to be so many changes now that it's just a very slippery slope now. There's there is um, now so many grammatical errors now in the King James Bible that I don't believe were there before. Um, it's probably not as many as, you know, Meeks and, was it Ye Yeshua? What's the other channel again? I forget. Uh, Yeshua something. Um, the, the lady. <laughs> she sometimes comments on this channel, right? Um, oh yeah, it's extol Yeshua always. She's made some very good videos. Which, which you can't just like um, totally say that a per like all the things that a person says are wrong because of A, B, and C. And if if you if you don't know what A, B, and C are, then um, you shouldn't try to rebuke someone who's who's actually made some very good videos. That I wouldn't actually agree with all the Mandela effects that extol Yeshua always comes up with, dear sister. I don't I don't agree with all of your. Um, hypothesis there, all, all the things that you've discovered there, but that doesn't mean, I, I know the Mandela effect is real. She, she see what I mean? I know that it's real, and uh, I know that she must be a believer in, in Yeshua as well, right? Just just my observations here, so so that means that she's a sister, and that means that she deserves love. Is, is that true? Am I in the wrong lines here, or am I preaching a different gospel? I don't know, brothers and sisters, you tell me. I mean, I can disagree with someone without actually calling them demon-possessed. Strange that you would you'd call someone that. Uh, we, all of us might have some certain issues in our life, but that's not how you approach a believer, a brother and sister in the Lord, who's putting their own time in. Um, 
highlighting some very good things that um, I think are, you know, they're, they're, they're good things for people to consider um, as we, we learn the Word of God, as we uh, test ourselves to see if we're in the faith, you know, and there's various ways you can do that. But uh, the most important thing is have love. Um, don't just approach people and say you need deliverance. Say, excuse me, maybe you need deliverance, my friend. You see, see how that works. I mean, judge lest you judge not lest you be judged. Basically, show a bit of wisdom. If if you know something to be true, and just share that information in God's grace. Make a video about it and say, dear sister, you know, um, I've I, I feel that <clears throat> you know there's various uh, editions of the King James Bible. You're using the Zondervan. There's the Oxford edition, there's the Cambridge edition, and you just show the differences within that. You do a little video series showing the differences between the, these Bible versions, and you do, you highlight as many evidences as possible that goes right back as far as you can. And you just put your little Bible series up there and you say, Dear sister, you can check this series out. You know, I disagree with some of these Mandela effects that you've been highlighting. Big, right, that's all. That's how you do it, man. That's how you do it. That's how people learn. That's how people grow, right? But I kind of, know, I have a feeling I know the source. This uh, making J, J, this making you sort of approach people in that light. I have a feeling it's someone that we both know, my brother. And that person, I don't believe that person is walking with the Lord, my friend. Um. So, yeah, I mean. I rebuke people openly. Um, I don't speak behind people's backs. I never do that, actually. I never speak behind anyone's back, my friend. I would rather stand with a microphone in, in the center of a city and talk about someone rather than talk about someone behind their back. And the reason that, that God testifies to it is, is that I do it in love. I don't do it in hate. I do it in love. Yeah, I've stood there and with the microphone in hand, you know, in cities, rebuking Benny Hinn for, for being a, a false um, preacher. Done it many times, right? Now, does that mean I can't do that to a brother or sister that I know that's, that's not walking in faith, that's not walking with Jesus Christ? Of course I can. And I will do it. And if I see them on the street, I'll rebuke them as well. I'll rebuke them face to face. I'll rebuke them on YouTube. I'll rebuke them anywhere I am, basically. Um, I, I don't have a problem rebuking people, you know, because um, I do it in love. You know, I'm not, I'm not doing it so that uh, to make me look better and all that type of stuff. All of us have got issues in our lives, but at the end of the day, um, it's through the blood of the Lamb and through the testimony of our mouths that we overcome Satan in this world. And if you think you've overcome Satan just by doing a couple of uh, couple of weeks fast fasting, and then going in and stabbing somebody in the back, and, and that's that's meant to be the Holy Spirit, <laughs> you're you're not walking in the truth, my friend. Um, and you're obviously affecting a lot of people around you. And what I would say to you is just to stop doing that, or God is going to rebuke you severely, and you know who you are. Okay. So I've said enough today, guys. Um, may the Lord be with you and bless you and give you his peace, give you his shalom and enlighten your understanding. He's a, um, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Hallelujah. Shalom.